In the previous lecture we started talking about angina medication. And we talked about beta blockers and calcium channel blockers. So in this lecture we'll go ahead and talk about the other two types of medication. Let's start with organic nitrates. These drugs relieve symptoms by reducing myocardial oxygen demand. And they are effective in stable, unstable and variant angina. So, what is the exact mechanism? Organic nitrates relax vascular smooth muscle. By their intracellular conversion to nitrite ions, and then to nitric oxide, which activates guanylate cyclase and increases the cell's cyclic guanosine monophosphate, CGMP. Elevated CGMP causes the phosphorylation of the myosin light chain, resulting in vascular smooth muscle relaxation. Then CGMP is degraded and inactivated by phosphodiesterase type 5. And this terminates the action of nitric oxide. Nitrates cause dilation of the large veins, which reduces preload, venous return to the heart, and this reduces the work of the heart. And they also dilate the coronary arteries, increasing blood supply to the myocardium. There are three drugs in this class we should talk about. Nitrates differ in their onset of action and rate of elimination. The onset of action varies from 1 minute for nitroglycerin, to 30 minutes for isosorbide mononitrate. So, for an immediate relief of an acute angina attack, precipitated by exercise or emotional stress, sublingual nitroglycerin is the drug of choice. So it's very important for everyone suffers from angina, to have nitroglycerin tablets in their pockets for acute attacks. Significant first pass metabolism of nitroglycerin occurs in the liver. So, to avoid the hepatic first pass effect, it's commonly administered via the sublingual, or transdermal route, as a patch or an ointment. Isosorbide mononitrate, is stable against hepatic breakdown, so it has an improved bioavailability and long duration of action. Oral isosorbide dinitrate undergoes denitration to two mononitrates. Now let's talk about side effects, contraindications and precautions of this class. First, headache is the most common adverse effect of nitrates. And high doses can also cause postural hypotension, facial flushing and tachycardia. Phosphodiesterase type 5 inhibitors such as sildenafil, potentiate the action of the nitrates as they inhibit the enzyme that deactivates CGMP. So this combination is contraindicated. Tolerance to the actions of nitrates develops rapidly as the blood vessels become desensitized to vasodilation. And this can be overcome by providing a daily nitrate-free interval to restore sensitivity to the drug. For example, nitroglycerin patches are worn for 12 hours and then removed for 12 hours. And finally let's talk about the sodium channel blocker, renalazine. It improves the oxygen supply and demand equation. It inhibits the late phase of the sodium current, and this reduces intracellular sodium and calcium overload, thereby improving diastolic function. Renalazine can be used for angina, and it also has antiarrhythmic properties. It is indicated for the treatment of chronic angina, and may be used alone or in combination with other traditional therapies. That's all for this lecture. In the next lecture we'll start discussing blood disorders, and anticoagulants and antiplatelet agents. So subscribe and wait for the next lecture.